Welcome to Fortune Cookies Tarot. I'm Annabelle. I'm a tarot practitioner for over 35 years. And in this video, we're going to talk about Diddy's new 120 complaints. We're also going to talk about J-Lo and what she knew back in the day. Be right back. Hey, Tarot fam. So we're going to talk about a couple of things here. We're going to talk about the new 120 complaints against Diddy. They're bad and there's young people involved. Really, really terrible stuff. We're also going to talk about J-Lo back in the day. And there was an incident in a club. We're going to scratch the surface on that and talk a little bit about how it's affecting her uh, disposition and the way she's running her gig right now. But before that, I want you guys to let me know intro video or not. I'm getting mixed reviews on this. I, I'm, I have some people that are saying it's a waste of time. I have some people that are saying, I like it. It's kind of exciting and gets me geared up, but you let me know. All right. So vote down in the comments. And before you do that, please like, share, and subscribe as well. So subscribership is up. Things are happening. Things are going well, but not so well for Diddy. So let's take a look. I've got the card view up but we're going to make this nice and big and I am going to disappear so that you get the full view of cards here. So this new 120 complaints. This is likely the nail in the coffin from all people discussing it. So Let's just see if it's going to get worse. Is this the start of an avalanche? Two of wands. Everyone's going to be backing away from him. He's not getting out of that jail. The powers that be are very upset, but they are biding their time. His lifestyle is going to be gone, baby gone. They are going to get what they want out of this. So is this the golden ticket to locking him up forever. It sure looks like it. This is everyone running away from him with that two of wands. And I'm using the pulp tarot today, guys. I'll put the link in the comments. This is a super cool deck. I'm going to be using it for the next few days. So the people that are in charge of the machine that is the Hollywood music industry are not very happy with him, but they're biding their time. They are going to take their time before they remove everything from Diddy. So this really is going to be the end of the end. So how much of this is legit complaints, actual complaints, real complaints, people that were actually there, and how much are people just jumping in on the bandwagon trying to get a payout? Because that's really what's going on. These are civil suits. We are going to see people looking for payouts. When you have a billionaire or a multimillionaire, you're going to see a lot of people jumping into the fray. So that's the vibe I'm getting. What? Uh, there was a strobe light that fell and it hit the mirror, creating a weird effect, and it sprayed my eyes, and I need $2 million. So Gregopedia thinks that the 120 is going to be more. What are you, you going to say? What's your percentage over there, Gregopedia? My percentage? Uh, based on absolutely... Uh, no information. No information. information. Just your psychic Just ability. my psychic ability, I would say probably well over 50%. 50% are, are going to be fake claims. Are going to be fake. Yeah. Okay. So let's go with Gregopedia's assertion. Is it 50%, over 50% that are going to be fake, 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 as Elaine Bennis says? Seven of Swords. Yes, we're going to see a lot of shady McShadesters here. The claims about the young people that were involved in this, are those going to be real? Two of Cups. Yes, those are going to be real, unfortunately. We're going to find out about that. Is it going to be very, very young people? <clears throat> I 
I think the very, very young people um, is a big question mark. Is it going to be young women below the age of consent? Are we going to see that? Knight of Wands, yes. So, and this Knight of Wands, the Knight of Wands is a lot of virility. We're looking at a lot of excitement, exual excitement. And the reason why this is valuable is because this is kind of par for the course with anyone who is a rock star or some kind of celebrity. They're going to be looking for the freshest of the fresh. I'm not saying that this is right. I'm not saying that he did the right thing. I'm not saying that this should be, uh, you know, permitted. But I think there are young women that are looking to get into that power matrix. And I think it's very easy to... Uh, forget that 17 is not 18. Forget that 16 is not 22. I think it's very easy to do that. Um, do I think that the girls hoodwinked them? No, I'm not saying that, but I do think that it was overlooked. Well, you know, you're, you're, you look like you're 21. So have this drink. You're mostly 18. You're mostly 18. <laughs> so are we counting gestational ages? Um, uh, so, you know, and it's not a laughing matter. Greg and I are not laughing at this guy. So, um, it's, it's a horrible mentality, a gallows humor. It is gallows humor. Greg and I have very, very gallows humor. If you can't shake it off, you're going to be crying. It's going to, going to leave a big scar. So are we going to see, I, now we have the, um, the complainant who Gloria Allred is representing. And I believe she, Gloria Allred is representing some other individuals that she has not yet named, but are we going to see more people coming to the fore? Because I do feel that that, uh, young woman and forgive me, her name is escaping me. I did a reading on her the other day, but her name is escaping me. Um, I do think that she is incredibly brave. Are we going to see more brave? I shouldn't say women. Are we going to see more brave voices step forward? We're going to see a lot of brave people stepping forward. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Five of wands. Lots of wands here. Ace of swords. Queen of pentacles. Eight of wands. They are going to be coming thick and fast, but they're actually hidden right now. So in the ultimate which is our eight of wands here. We're going to see name after name after name. Now this could be the 120 that we're seeing, but I think we're going to see many, many more names uh, stepping forward. And I do think people will be using their name, but it's going to be hard to keep track because there's going to be so many of them right now. Four of Swords, they have them under the surface. They are not revealing these individuals. And I do think intellectually that is because of the uh, coercion that was going on. There were some phone calls made. Um, are they hiding them? Yes. A lot of these individuals are very nervous. They're not quite ready to come out. They will come out in the future, the star, and they're going to band together. This is going to create an amazing tribe of individuals that are, they have to keep them separate at the moment so that they don't corroborate stories and things like that. Um, but ultimately I do think that this is going to be quite an amazing community because they've all had a shared experience. They've all had a shared uh, trauma in this situation. So I think we are going to see some, uh, some, some prominent individuals from this group step forward in the, uh, like the Virginia Dufre, um, uh, isn't that her name? Virginia Dufre. Uh, I think we're going to see showcased individuals that are brave enough, strong enough, and willing to step forward and tell their story. So this will create a tribe. This Three of Cups is not a celebration in this sense. It is more of a, co a collection of individuals, a tribe, a village of individuals that are going to lean into each other, which I think is good. The star does indicate that there's hope in the future to eradicate this anxiety and the fear and the hiding behind things. So there we go. In the past, it was the glamour, the glitz of the 
lifestyle that drew them in. So I think we're not going to see quite so many people that were recruited. I think there were paid individuals that were brought in as uh, party performers, let's put it that way. But I do think that it is just the glamour of the lifestyle that that brought them into that orbit, into the orbit of Diddy. I don't think that we can say, oh, well, you know, they were they were recruited, picked up off the street or dragged out of the club. I don't think that that's what was going on. The bait was very, very easy. Under the surface, there's a lot of people that are struggling with this. It is an extremely difficult uh, disposition and situation to be in, especially now that more stories are coming out more people are coming forward. The individuals that have been a part of this are really being shocked by it. And again, that young woman, that I, young woman, I think she's my age. Um, I, th the one that Gloria Allred is representing, she is, uh, her case is going forward because it was only in 2023 that she realized that the tape containing her image um, was being sold for, uh, commercial purposes. So I just stopped for a second. It is Thalia Graves. I just wanted to make sure that I did have her name um, because I think it is important for us to recognize that incredibly brave woman. So I think ultimately this case is going to have some pit holes, pitfalls and holes in it because of the individuals that are going to come in and wrongfully try and seek uh, damages awarded, those kinds of things. So I think it does muddy the case a little bit. Um, one quick thing, are we going to see individuals planted in there? Individuals planted in the complaints to muddy the water. Will we see ones that were pushed in there, sent in there to make the case more complicated? And cast doubt on all the complaints. Are we going to see that Knight of Wands? Nine of Cups. Age of Cups, Five of Pentacles. Ten of Pentacles. I think some of the participants, I think some of the uh, willing participants, some of the individuals that were there and that maybe did things to some of the unsuspecting party goers, I think they are going to start changing their story. Um, you know, we may, we may, uh, do a little Ashton Kutcher here because Ashton Kutcher seems to be changing his tune about the people that he has been hanging out with. So let's just take a little, we'll, we'll take a little trip down memory lane with Ashton Kutcher after this spread. But I do think that there are individuals that are going to go back in time and kind of rewrite their experience, rewrite what they did at Diddy parties and freak offs to conceal their consent and willingness to be a part of it. So this is going to be very curious. Uh, you know, there's footage, there's evidence of them getting involved, and I think it's not becoming. So I think they're going to turn it around and say, hey, I was coerced too. I took a drink of that. I got the tainted baby oil on me, and I did things that I am not proud of. And I want to apologize because I was not in my right mind too. And that's really what we're going to see. We're going to see, I was not in my right mind. I was too partied out. So real quick, let's see if Ashton Kutcher is going to be the, the captain of that team. Team, I changed my mind 20 years later. Is Ashton Kutcher one of those? Knight of Wands, there he is. There he is. He was just having a good time. But he was thoughtlessly, look at this, it's all the same cards, guys. All the same cards. He was thoughtlessly having a great time. So his plan is to beg 
for mercy on this one. I was there. I was young. I was dumb. I was full of blankety blank, blank, blank. I was flexing my newfound celebrity. It was exciting. Things were great. Under the surface, I really wasn't thinking about anybody's feelings. I wasn't really uh, accepting of maybe yes or no from some people. I was just having a great time. Now, I do have a story about Ashton Kutcher. I did see him at an event when I lived in Los Angeles. And uh, let's just say he was very free with his affections. I'm just going to say that. Um, and he was unilaterally very free with his affections. It was at, I believe it was the launch party for that 70s show, but Kiss was playing. It was in, it was in LA. Um, and uh, it was a very interesting, interesting evening, fun evening. Um, but I did get to witness some interesting things there. So don't feel bad about saying that. That was my own witnessing of the event. So like it or leave it. But uh, here in the past, you know, he did feel somewhat outside of that, um, that party element. It wasn't exactly his kind of gang, just wasn't really the people that he was into hanging out with. But there were lots of pretty girls there. Ultimately, he really did not it wasn't his cup of tea. Um, I think it was a little too fast for him. The getting up and partying the next day, it's much easier to get up, roll over, roll a joint. But this was get up, like get your IV and then go get your freak on all over again. So there was, it was a bit too intense for him. There was no, it wasn't the odd occasion of partying down. It was kind of a, a constant stream of partying. The, the weekend lasted like six days sometimes, which can get really tedious. So um, now as a father, as a married man, he is rethinking the wildness of his youth. At the time, he was totally content with it being the, you know, sowing the wild oats of his youth. Totally understand it. Um, you know, right now he thinks that he absolutely can reorder the, I don't want to say perception, but the facts of what he did. He can kind of reorder what was going on there and he will attempt to do that. Hope is that there will be some merciful types that are going to lean into him. And he also hopes that he can execute this as best as possible to explain, I was young, I was involved in um, a, a very um, exclusive party element. So, you know, forgive me for not knowing how to be a celebrity without any, any training. Uh, Knight of Pentacles up here. I do think he can rebuild his, I'm just going to bring that down a little bit up. Oh, so can't see it guys. I'm bringing them down. There's our Knight of Pentacles. I think he can rebuild his professional appearance. I think he can rebuild his professional reputation. I don't think that this is, I, and again, I don't think that he did anything that was exceptionally out of bounds. I think he went and, you know, maybe banged a few different people in one night, went from room to room or something like that. I think he uh, just tasted of the fruit that was there. Let's put it that way. Um, you know, does that become a problem? And this is at the end of the nineties guys, like we're talking about the end of the nineties. So, um, was when I was in LA. So, uh, you know, very curious, but we'll see, what does he have to do? What does Ashton Kutcher need to do to rebuild his reputation? What does he have to do? So yeah, we'll look at two things here. How guilty is Ashton on a scale of one to 10? Like how bad were his, was his participation? The hermit card. I don't, th this is not that bad. 
Okay. So the hermit card, it's the, the 14th card or uh, ninth card. I'm sorry. The ninth card in the major arcana. So it's, it's just getting into the phase of life where we are more considerate. We're starting to see for things from another person's perspectives. There is still a line of morality that he had there. So I don't think that he did anything, um, that was terrifically bad. I think he was there for pleasure's sake, the bacchanalia and all of it. Um, did I say that correctly? Bacchanal? Uh, but, but the, the bacchanalian. You know, I trained a Rottweiler named Bacchus. He was a fraternity dog that wound up living with the, the original owner's parents. Mm -hmm. And he, he looked like exactly how you would expect Bacchus to look like. He was like a big chubbinooch and he was kind of lazy. And the mom said the worst thing is that he really likes wine because they would give him wine. Yeah. So she was like, I can't have a glass of wine without Bacchus drinking it. I was like, oh boy. <laughs> so I like Raven with tequila. Oh my God. Our dog Raven loves tequila. So what does he have to do to resurrect his uh, reputation? We're, we're talking about Aston, uh, uh, Ashton, Ashton, uh, Ashton, yes. Kutcher. Consul. Nine of wands, nine of cups, eight of pentacles. Queen of Wands, Ten of Wands. This is the yellow brick road for Ashton. He, unfortunately, and I really like the Ashton Kutcher punked version. He's got to drop that. Right now, he's got to go into a very serious phase. Get behind closed doors. Stay put. Limit your interactions with other people. Don't align yourself with anyone. Answer all questions from authorities. That's the best thing that he can do. And if you haven't, in Architectural Digest, you can see Ashton and Mila Kunis's house. Oh, my God. It is fantastic. They have a great room that is the greatest great room I have ever seen. So love that house. So get behind closed doors. Stay put. Don't go out and about. Don't try and prove yourself. The time will come when all of this passes. He really needs to sit down and stand down until this is over. When all of this passes, then he can get back to work. It's not going to, I think he's going to be more on the producer end of it. I think, um, you know, he's not going to be glad handing out there, you know, up in the front. He's got to stick with his charities. If he's going to uh, fund or produce a movie, it's got to be. What was the um, the movie about the trafficking that just came out that we didn't see? No, I forgot the name of it. I forgot the name of it too. We really should see that, yeah. but I think that's a brown liquor night. So, yeah, I think it is. Um, so he's got to transform this vision. So he, you know, and I think even producing a movie that has something to do with the spoils of celebrity, because this really is about the spoils of celebrity. He's extremely hopeful that he's going to restore his good name. Hopefully he will. So we'll talk more about Ashton later. We'll give him a little bit more of a reading, but let's talk about JLo back in the day. Greg, what do you know about JLo back in the day? Uh, yeah. Um, she was fly girl. She's a fly girl from the Bronx. She's from the Bronx. Your brother-in-law knew her. Your brother-in-law knew her. And did he? And did he? I know. I've well, said before, that. Before that, all this stuff happened. Before all this stuff happened. Nice. So, did he go to school with J Lo too? Yeah, they were all from the same. Uh, were they really? So, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. So, my brother in law knows everybody. He's got a guy for everything. <laughs> we don't talk about that. <laughs> we don't we're we're talk about we're that. We're talking about it right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, he calls me SIL now. <laughs> How you doing, SIL? I'm like, how are you doing, BIL? So, J Lo, back in the day, was she? <laughs> was she into all of this stuff? So, you know, there is a story about the night of the club shooting 
that when her mother went to get her at the police station, her mother was screaming at her about hanging out with these thug types. So I don't think that her mom was really into it. Was she in love? Was it a business move? Was this a, a real relationship that she was involved in? So let's look. Was it a real relationship? Eight of Pentacles, it was not work. Nine of Pentacles, it was romantic. You know, it was an excitement about being with a big player. And then she realized that he was not the big player. He was not the guy that she wanted him to be, not the leader that she wanted. In, in her estimation, she was looking for diamonds and pearls and gold. And he was about the power behind it. So where she was more curious about investments and turning money into more, working hard for that money. He was more about the facade. And this isn't to impugn, you know, the, the empire that he built, but he was more about the facade and uh, flexing and, and getting people to pay attention and then starting to dovetail off that. There was something about his ability to perform. I think she really felt that she was a better artist than he was. So that I think is very um, curious. And she knew that their paths would have to diverge after that night in the club. One of the things she was very afraid of was that she would not be able to get away from him. And he also tried to manhandle her career. He wanted to be in charge of her career. That was something that she did not want to do. Something about Lucy Arnaz, uh, Lucille Ball. There's something about that kind of agency over her career was something that she wanted. She wanted to be a trailblazer, someone who was in charge of her stuff. And she was not willing to transform into a protege of his. She did not want him to get a piece of her earnings, which I think was a discussion that he had with her at one point. I think the shooting, the, the incident at the club was one part of this. I think another part of it was that she really just did not want to share her career with him and give him credit for her career. So, I, you know, it's kind of like he fancied himself like uh, Mar Mars Day in Purple Rain, where he was like creating uh, Apollonia 6 and he was like making that band. And, you know, I, I, he, I, you know, Diddy had, what was the show? Making the band? Is that what it was? I oh, you don't remember that? I wasn't either. I stopped watching MTV after they stopped playing music. So the making of the band, I think is what it was called. I never watched it. But I, I think that was really what Diddy wanted. He wanted all of those tentacles, NT, tentacles, um, big difference. I think he wanted all of those tentacles into the careers of others. Very, um, you know, old school R&B. Like I'm, what's that? Real Wrath of God type stuff. Real Wrath of God type stuff. No, I'm going to buy your your uh, catalog for 30 cents on the dollar. What do you say, kid? Um, you know, I do think that there, there was something of that that he wanted to do with her. He wanted to steal that work from her and not have her be credited with her work. Now, there's a lot of debate about... Yes, Barry Gordy. So there's a lot of debate about uh, whether J-Lo really is a great performer. I, I think even if you're not a great singer and you're auto-tuned out the wazoo, if you're dancing on the stage like J-Lo, Britney Spears, anybody like that, you still get credit from me. I can't dance worth a lick. Um, and I can dance a little bit, but you got to put a lot of, a lot of tequila in me. <laughs> it's like beer. So how is this Diddy case going to affect J-Lo. We already saw how it's going to affect Ashton. How is it going to affect J-Lo? Are we going to hear things about her that'll make our hair curl? 
Ace of Wands. Ooh, Three of Pentacles. Knight of Pentacles. Chariot. As much as she is trying to move herself away from the situation, I do think we are going to see that she was privy and witness to a number of things that will come up. Are they going to drag her into the courtroom? Yeah, I think they are. I think there's going to be things that date back to way back in the day. I think they're going to try and get a statement from her. Is it going to be super relevant to the things that they're going to be examining? No. She will be adamant about that this was not something that I ever would have condoned. This is not something, the the, the freak offs, the, the, the parties, the videotaping. Um, this is something I would never condone, something I would never be involved in. But I did see blah, 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 blah. So I do think um, we may see her on the witness list. We may not hear her testify, though. We may get a statement. But I don't know if she's going to be in the courtroom. I think her attorney is going to work very, very hard to keep her out of it because it is not really relevant, except that it sets a, a, a standard of behavior from his early success years. So I think that's what we see. Does it affect her career moving forward? Uh, a little bit. I think there are other things that are at play for her career. I think her career is in a sunset moment. I don't mean a permanent sunset moment, but I feel like her career is just in a little bit of a sunset. She's got a lot going on with the divorce with Ben. Um, that didn't work out. So I do think she's kind of on a... Um, on, on, I don't want to say a break from her career, but she's she's kind of taking her foot off the gas. She's maybe going into neutral. If she's on a boat, she's out in the middle of the ocean and just drifting with the tide, no anchor down. So I, so just to wrap up, I do think that we are going to see some fake individuals with the complaints that we're seeing the 120. I think we are also going to see Ashton Kutcher kind of swept up in all of this as well. I think we're going to hear different things from him. I think he's going to try and backpedal and uh, de-intensify his participation in the parties that went on specifically not the freak offs. I'm not saying the freak offs, but uh, the parties and the partying atmosphere that he was involved in. I think he's going to try and distance himself from that. I think the best advice for him is to just hold up for a little bit, pay attention to your kids, pay attention to your wife, just wait for all of this to kind of blow over. Um, JLo, I think her too, she needs to stay out of the courtroom. Just answer the questions, ma'am, send in a uh, statement, send in whatever you need to cooperate with the authorities, and then you can go on your merry way. This is going to go one to two, possibly into a third year. We're going to see this court case for some time. It is not going to wrap up right away. Between the criminal trial, the civil cases that are coming up, I think we're going to see this for some time. Um, so we're not. We're going to keep talking about it. We're going to keep reading on it. So let me know down below any questions that you may have. You can also book your own magical reading with me. It is the spookiest month of the year. Down below, there is a link to my scheduler. If you have any questions, you can email me at fortunecookiestarot at gmail.com. And as always, my digital academy is up. You can go, you can take a class with me. There's a free tarot class on there if you'd like to do that. The 101 class, I am trying to get it up and going. I know I keep telling you guys it's delayed, it's delayed, but it's going to be great. There is a Lenormand class on there that you can take in the meantime, which is super fun. Lenormand is another kind of card reading. It's, it's based on playing cards. So it's super fun. Um, but I hope that all of you enjoyed this. Let me know if you have any questions down below. I will answer them in future readings. I hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for being here. Mm -hmm.